Welcome, Michael. Thank you very much for joining me at what is a very busy week for you and the ISC conference. Uh, so thanks, thanks for joining me, Thank first you of all. Thank you for inviting me. It's a good opportunity to meet, meet you here. Yeah. I, I enjoy that you are here. Yeah, well, thank you for, thank you for welcoming, welcoming us all to this wonderful city. First of all, would you like a cup of tea? Of course, I would like a cup of tea. You know, tea with Rich. Yeah. Tea with Rich, all right. There you go. So, thanks. So first of all, of course, we are here in Salzburg for ISC. You're one of the co-chairs. How does it feel to be co-chairing the, um, the conference with your old professor, Wolfgang you Linder? Know, for me, it's a really a nice experience because uh, for me, it's the first big conference. I'm organizing a small summer school every second year. Sure. This is my experience with organizing such things. But uh, Wolfgang has experience for a long, long time. He's organized several huge, big comp uh, conferences and I can uh, step in a little bit and, you know. So he's guiding you, a he's lot guiding of you helping down the hands yeah, and that's good. we can divide, of course, the, the duties. Yeah. So it's a, it's a good, I like to work with Wolfgang and with the other Wolfgang from the ASAC, Wolfgang Buchberger, yeah. also Christian Klampfel. Yeah. We are really a good team, closely working together also on other, with other things, other projects, more or less. Sure. Obviously, you said it's one of your first big big mm. conferences. What were your kind of hopes? What Wolfgang sort of laid out some time ago some of the aims of the conference. What were your kind of aims for what you wanted to, to achieve, how you wanted to bring people together? I mean, I like that. The, I mean, I find it fascinating that, that people come on a place together to discuss uh, about science. They come from all, all over the world, more or less. We had uh, people from Japan, from China, of course, Australia, uh, also South America, America, and yeah. of course, Europe. Uh, it's, 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 it's good to, to have uh, these kind of discussion because uh, such a conference is actually kind of a motor for, the, for our future work because you get always a stimulus for future work. Sure. This is actually needed. Huh? Mm. And over the years, you know, this is almost like a second family. There's separation science society. Right. So have you, you just talked about being stimulated. What, what have you seen this week that's kind of popped out as a major kind of, wow, that's gonna, that's really useful for us. Yeah, I mean, I, I was not attending all the lectures this time because I was uh, trapped with other things. Uh, but uh, of course it was very impressive, the opening lectures, the two opening lectures sure. from Pat Sandra and uh, Jeremy Nicholson. On the one hand, Pat Sandra was talking about the antibody characterization. This is something that is of particular interest for me as a right. pharmaceutical uh, chemist, or an, as a scientist who is working in the field of pharmaceutical yeah. analysis. And these kind of drugs are getting more important for the future. Sure. Analytically, it's very challenging to characterize these molecules and, you know, there are no drugs without quality, yeah? so this is a very important issue. And, and is that the big focus of your, your work at the moment? This is one of, of our focuses uh, and actually because it's one of the future, future kind of drugs, so I think it's very important for us to get into it and, and, and be trained also in these methodologies that are used for that purpose. On the yeah. other hand, I mean, uh, it was impressive to see what Jeremy Nicholson is doing at uh, Imperial College. Yeah. Uh, it was a fascinating talk uh, about all these new developments uh, that he has implemented in clinical analysis with this eye knife and these things that you can directly uh, analyze uh, the, yeah, the, the metabolites uh, during cutting. In I actually saw the eye knife working. You saw I went, it I went to working. A, to, a, to, a, to a kind of a meeting and yeah. uh, they had the eye knife ready. Mm. We, we didn't use it on a human, mm. uh, of course, mm. but we had some pork, mm -hmm. pork chop and pork liver. Oh. And you burn through the two mm -hmm. and it changes from yeah, pork meat, 90, <clears throat> 99% and then into the liver, 99% liver. It's kind of interesting oh. area. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a fascinating area and I think it opens up a kind of different area of analysis. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, not the same as mm -hmm. your world where, mm -hmm. you know, quality mm. and characterization are the key words. Yeah, yeah. Here we're just talking about yes or no information. Yeah, so it's yeah. quite interesting mm. to see the screen they've developed mm -hmm. that says this is green, it's you know, this mm. is 
normal flesh mm. or this is you know cancerous tissue and, and I think that's really mm. yeah it's an interesting direction so in, in terms of your own work what are the what are the, the, the challenges that you're trying to solve at the moment what are the what are the sort of some of the key key problems uh, one uh, research project I'm working on now is the analysis of uh, oxidative stress markers right you know they are uh, uh, radicals formed in our cells, is particularly in mitochondria, and these radicals, these reactive, uh, so, uh, re reactive oxygen species, they they oxidize, they attack the lipid membranes, mm. and we get oxidized phospholipids. These oxidized phospholipids, they are markers of oxidative stress because you know they are increased if sure. there are too much reactive oxygen species available in a, in a cell. But they are also biologically active, and uh, yeah, so they can uh, uh, influence uh, cascades, several different pathways, and therefore I think this is a topic of of, of huge importance. It has some impl implication in several important diseases like atherosclerosis, uh, Alzheimer, etc., etc. Many of the most important diseases the big diseases that uh, we where we face still problems to cure them they are there there's some involvement of these reactive oxygen species mm. and therefore uh, it, it's really uh, a topic of importance and on the other hand it's methodologically very challenging because of the huge complexity of the samples you may know that uh, phospholipids they are composed of two fatty acid acyl chains and sure. And uh, you have different uh, f uh, different uh, amino groups on the attached on the f uh, on the, the amino part on the phosphate group is may change. Uh, therefore, you have a huge structural variety. And once you oxidize the double bonds in the in the phospholipid, the complexity gets even even more diverse. So mm. therefore, this is something that is in, of interest uh, to analyze these complex samples. So. Sure, and and. With, what is the sort of end goal of that project? Yeah, of course it would be uh, of interest for us to have a, a very quick clinical tool uh, to analyze these oxidative stress markers so that you can say, for example, take a blood sample, take a drop of the blood, we make nanoparticles where we immobilize uh, antibodies or uh, chemical groups so that we can extract specific compounds, mm. the specific oxidative phospholipid we are interested in, and then we just make quick MS or LC-MS and get uh, a profile of the oxidative stress markers. And the doctor could say, okay, this is a critical, or this is not critical. This is something that... So there's a direct clinical application? A uh, clinical you, application, for. maybe for example in atherosclerotic diagnosis or something like that. Right, okay. So I was told by Emily Hilder, in fact, you, you've been given the Jubilee Award from the Chromatic right. Society. She said you wouldn't tell me yourself, so I thought I'd just ask you about that. Seems like quite a quite an important award. Um, maybe you can just tell me a little bit about that and you know why you believe you've you've received this award. I mean, first of all, I'm uh, very uh, grateful and it's a great honor for me, of course, to, to receive this award from the Chromatographic Society because, I mean, uh, this puts me in a row with uh, so many different uh, uh, so great names in, in, in our field, uh, like, for example, Jeremy Nicholson, for example, got the award in 1995, oh, okay. yeah. uh, Gerd Desmet, uh, Peter Schumacher, there's a huge list. All the big names. All the big names, yeah. So you're so a big name. Very, very, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a great honor for me. Yeah? And this is actually my first international award. Oh, okay. So this is so even a bigger pleasure for me to get this. And when, somehow when? I feel it's uh, also a recognition that I was always working hard. But right. on the other hand, I think uh, what I should say here is that, uh, I mean, actually you get such an award only because you have good co-workers and you have also, I had also a very, very good boss yeah, who, a mentor, Wolfgang was always a mentor for me and, yeah. and he showed me the way, directed me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But in general, we were all, always also working very, very hard and with the focus and to, to achieve something. And I think this is somehow also a recognition. 
Yeah, I recognize the people that you've worked yeah. with or working so with. The, the award is to some part uh, an award for a working group. Sure. Um, probably a, f a final final question. Um, in, in your field, if you, I ask this every now and again, if you could wave a magic wand and, and take a challenge and sort of instantly solve that problem, what, what, what would it be? What would be the one thing you'd want to change the fastest? Well, that's is a difficult question. It is difficult on the spot. Uh, as a scientifically, yeah. scientific question. Uh, what I would like to solve now is to make a material with which I could, uh, you know, these antibodies that are used uh, for uh, cancer therapy and so forth. They they are produced by many. Uh, they are produced by fermentation processes and, and afterwards by downstream processing. So mm. they are involved several chromatographic steps. Yeah, and. To make a material that could capture, for example, uh, a, an antibody, for example, by chemical ligands instead of a um, protein A mm. uh, ligand, uh, that would be something that would be uh, of great value, actually. With uh, should be a material, of course, that has a high capacity, so that it could uh, improve the, the the current technology. Is that, something is, that your, is that something that your group is working on, or do you see another group yeah, that's this working is something in that area? Where we are working as well. Uh, the the interesting thing in this regard is, you know, we like to make kind of materials. In principle, we typically make materials with functionalized surfaces, and it typically involves molecular recognition. And we are interested in molecular recognition. How to recognize a specific molecule in a very complex mixture yeah. on a, by chemical means, yeah? just by interacting between two molecules. Uh, so this is fascinating. And yeah. actually, this is how our, yeah, the biological systems work without molecular recognition. Yeah. This would be a big disaster. <laughs> the body would be a big disaster. Yeah, yeah so nothing would uh, work properly. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for your time, Mike. It's been a pleasure talking to you, and uh, I look forward to that. There's a party tonight, I believe, and maybe we can share a few more stories over a couple of beers. In the meantime, that have some be, tea, and thank you once again. Thanks for, for inviting me. It was a pleasure. Thank you.